just after 6 a.m. on this Thursday morning. Thanks so much for joining us on Up With Cram. I'm Channing Curtis. And I'm Tim Pham. It's good to see you, friends, on this Thursday, one day closer to the weekend. And as we talk about the weekend, it's never too early to talk about the weekend, right? It is actually going to be a nice one. It's going to be pretty warm. Meteorologist Thomas Patrick tracking it all for us. Thomas, but let's get people out the door on this Thursday morning. Yeah, for today, kind of more of the same. We're expecting those warmer conditions already very much mild, still at about 40 degrees here in Spokane. Rain chances done. Patchy fog still present, but no need for the advisories today. There's Doppler radar, the last of those showers in North Idaho, just fading away as of this hour, which we still stay at 40 degrees in Spokane. So very much a mild start to the day, and it will be a decently warm finish. We're calling for mostly cloudy conditions, but high temperatures pushing the upper 40s to near 50 degrees today, and it's not the only day that will be near 50. We're going to look ahead at that weekend forecast, which promises to be a mild one for now. Spokane police are recommending assault charges against a Spokane County deputy after he was recorded on body camera beating a man while arresting him. The man suffered several injuries and was hurt bad enough. The jail actually refused to book him because he needed treatment for his injuries. Krem 2 first told you about this incident back in October. SPD has just sent its investigation to the county prosecutor's office recommending the deputy be charged with second degree assault. Give me your hand. Okay. This is footage from Sergeant Clay Hilton's body camera last August. Hilton approached the 62 year old man for being in his parked car in a park after dark. The man refused to hand over his ID and Hilton eventually pulled the man from his car before striking him multiple times. Lawyers for the man say he suffered eight broken ribs, a punctured lung and had a concussion. Spokane County Sheriff John Knowles released a statement yesterday afternoon saying now that the investigation is complete, he has ordered the Department's Office of Professional Standards to begin a comprehensive internal investigation and identify any and all policy violations as well as any charges or possible training needed moving forward. For more on this story and to read that full statement, you can head to our website, crem.com. This morning, there's a new person throwing their hat into the ring for the U.S. House of Representatives. Spokane City Council member Jonathan Bingle is running for Kathy McMorris Rogers seat after she announced she's not seeking reelection. Bingle has been serving on the city council since 2022. Before that, he ran a small business for 11 years and worked as a pastor. You may remember yesterday we told you State Representative Jacqueline Maycomer had also entered the race. Maycomer currently represents the 5th Congressional District, which includes Stevens, Ponderay, and Ferry Counties. So taking a look at some of the other candidates in the race, on the Republican side, Ferry County Commissioner Brian Dansel entered the race last week, as did John Gunther, who launched an unsuccessful bid for Senator Patty Murray's seat two years ago. On the Democratic side is Anne Marie Danimus, a small business owner, Carmela Conroy, a former prosecutor who now serves as the chair for Spokane County Democrats, is also running, and they're joined by Dr. Bernadine Bank, a physician. The Washington Congressional primary will take place on August 6th. The Spokane Regional Health District now confirming the first case of measles in Spokane County. SRHD says the person was exposed to the virus while traveling outside of the country, and it appears that person lives in the Deer Park area and was out in public while contagious last Sunday through Thursday. So here is where that person was at Spokane's International Airport, the Deer Park Library, Rosie's Hot Shots, the Taco Bell in Deer Park, Creekside Kenpo Karate and Horizon Credit Union. Here are some of the symptoms doctors say you need to watch out for. High fever, cough, runny nose, red eyes, and or a rash. If you believe you've been exposed and have symptoms, you should contact your doctor. The Spokane Regional Health District says that with this outbreak, they expect to see additional cases reported. The health district says the risk to the general public is low, especially if you're vaccinated. But vaccination rates for that particular virus are actually going down. So this morning, our Shannon Mowdy brings you more to the story by diving into vaccination rates and who is most at risk.
The U.S. declared measles eliminated in the year 2000, but over recent years, we have seen more cases crop up across the country, including here in Washington. Health experts say that's because of lower immunization rates. Spokane Regional Health District confirms this is the first measles case in Spokane County since 2015 when two people from the same home were infected. I think we're, we're hopeful for, for something similar. Mark Springer with SRHD says the risk to most people is low, especially those who are vaccinated, though immunization rates, specifically among young children, has trended down statewide. It is always a concern in a setting with high uh, community immunity or herd immunity, you know, that's above 90% or above 95%. Transmission, you know, um, tends to peter out a little bit. Washington Department of Health data shows among kindergartners, immunization rates have declined after 2020's five-year high. Last school year, only around 87 percent of kindergartners had completed all required vaccinations, which includes the MMR shot. There are very few allowed exemptions for the measles vaccine. Dr. Sarah DeHulst says that's due to state law enacted in 2019. It bars families from claiming personal or philosophical exemptions for the MMR vaccine. That was also the year the state saw its largest measles outbreak in nearly three decades, with 90 cases. Washington Department of Health graphs show a huge drop in personal exemptions from 2019 to the next school year, but a huge jump in religious exemptions in the same period. Although our overall kindergarten vaccination rates might be a little bit low, our MMR tends to stay pretty hot. In Spokane County, just under 83 percent of kindergartners have completed all vaccinations. Specifically looking at measles, 91 percent of kindergartners statewide have gotten the shot, but that number hovers around 87 percent in Spokane County. Now, if you are unvaccinated and think you've been exposed to measles, Dr. DeHulse says you can still get an MMR shot within a couple days of exposure, which can help prevent infection. For those who aren't eligible for the shot, there is the possibility to get an immune globulin within six days. Shannon Mowdy, Krem2 News. 608 on this very mild Thursday morning, about a half hour to sunrise, but our temperatures are still in the upper 30s to near 40 degrees. To start the day, that's pretty warm for February, still at 40 in Spokane. And for Coeur d'Alene, you're at 39 degrees. Bit of patchy fog here or there. No dense fog advisories, but we've noticed a little bit of fog over the uh, airport in the West Plains of Spokane County and out towards Moses Lake as well, which has a quarter mile visibility currently. Not tracking any rain for this morning. In fact, should be quite dry for these next handful of days. Through Saturday, still highs near 50 degrees. But on Sunday, that is when our weather pattern is going to begin to change. Rainy and windy at first, but we'll show you when snow chances return early next week.